typical let's see what different factors are there that affects the stability of a metal complex in this particular video i will be talking about only and only the nature of the central metal ion apart from this other factors are also there such as the nature of the ligands which also affects the stability of any metal complex right and it is very obvious if you have a look on the structure of this metal complex here whatever central metal ion is present here that will definitely be affecting the stability of the overall metal complex form right and also whatever surrounding ligands are present around the central metal ion that will also be having a large impact on the stability of the complex formed here right so these are the two important factors once again the first one is the metal ion the which is present at the center and the ligands which are surrounding the central metal ion upon which the stability of any metal complex actually depends right so i want to devote this whole lecture towards the very first factor here that is the nature of the metal ion and the nature of the ligands i will be discussing in a separate lecture from this lecture series right and let us see what is there in this case here that is the nature of the metal ion and how it affects the stability of any complex right so the first important thing is what it is the charge density i mean the charge density of the metal ion which will be having a great influence on the stability of any metal complex and moreover because charge density is given by a formula that is charge of the metal ion divided by the size of the metal ion so we can say that the charge density will further depend upon the charge as well as the size of the metal ion or in turn we can also say that whatever charge will be there on the central metal ion and whatever will be the ionic radii of the metal ion they will be having great effect on the stability of that particular metal complex right and the second thing about this metal ion is what it is the electronegativity of the metal ion which will also be affecting the stability of course right so in total we can say here that these three points will be covered in this lecture the first one is of course the charge and the second one will be the size of the metal ion and in last but not the least the electronegativity of the metal ion okay so this whole lecture will be based upon these three factors okay so let us first of all talk about the concept of charge density in detail so that you can have a good idea about what is meant by the charge density right as i have told you already that the charge density is given by the charge on the metal ion divided by the size or let's say the radius of the ion we can see here that the charge density is actually the charge density is directly proportional to the charge on the metal ion as well as it is inversely proportional to the radius of the metal ion right so we can say here that as the charge on the metal ion will increase the charge density will also increase because of this direct proportionality here and as the size or the radius of the metal ion decreases what will happen is once again the charge density will be going to increase okay and the same thing you can read from here that as the charge i mean this thing is increasing the charge density will be increasing definitely whereas if the size is decreasing i mean this radius i am talking about obviously because of this inverse proportionality here which you can see the charge density will further be increasing right so charge density depends upon the charge as well as the radius of the metal ion and the first important factor that is the stability on which the stability of the metal ion depends is what it is the charge density right so you can see here i have shown uh, some metal ion with this blue sphere let me write here this is what this is our 
this is our metal ion here metal ion it is having some positive charge which you can see here and as we are moving from here to here in this direction what is happening the size of the metal ion is same but you can see here that the magnitude of the positive charge on that metal ion is increasing right so what will happen is that because the size is same here if we keep this size same if we keep this size same here and we are increasing the charge from here i mean the numerator we are increasing what will happen is definitely the charge density will be going to increase here right and the other other possibility will be what here that we are keeping the charge same here as you can see here starting from this picture in which you can see this positive charge on in this yellow circle here and this positive charge in this yellow circle it is having same magnitude right but what is happening here is that the size of the metal ion here is what this is our metal ion let me write here this is the metal ion represented by this blue sphere here so as we are moving from here to the right hand side i mean in this direction the charge is same but what is happening is that the size of the metal line is decreasing so in this last case here what will happen is that the same magnitude of charge is present on a very small sized metal line right so obviously the charge density in this case will be highest it will be highest in this case as compared to in this case here right as well as even in this case where the size is kept same but the magnitude of charge is increasing so we can say here that even in this case which is present on the extreme right hand side the high amount of charge is present on the same sized metal line this means once again it will be highest i mean the charge density will be highest here in the last case okay so charge density basically means that what magnitude of charge is present per unit of the space right so in this case here obviously the charge density is highest as well as in this case right so as the charge density increases let's see what happens okay so you can read from here that a small metal ion which is having a high charge this means if we put these values in this formula here we will be getting a very high charge density okay so what it will allow is that it will allow a more close approach to the ligands i mean if this is the metal ion here it, which is having high charge density and here is the ligand let us say it is the ligand here so what will happen is that the metal line will be allowing a very close approach of this ligand to itself resulting in the formation of a very stable as well as strong bonds right so whatever metal complex we will get from these interactions will be very very stable in nature right so the charge density is actually an important factor deciding the stability of any particular metal complex right so as we have seen here that the charge density depends upon the charge as well as the size of the metal line so we can have these two factors which will be originating from this single factor i mean the charge density and now let us have a look in detail on these two factors separately i mean i mean the first thing is the charge and the second thing is the ionic radii of the metal ion and after that we will also be talking about the third factor that is the electronegativity of the metal ion okay and now let us first of all check out the uh, charge of the central metal ion right so as it is clear from the previous slide that the higher the charge on the central metal ion what will happen is that greater will be the forces of attraction in between the metal and the ligand and stable will be the metal complex right so you can see here two cases let us say that let me say here that this is the case one in which some metal ion is present and some ligand is present here and on this side we are having a case two in which the metal ion is present the same metal ion let us say and the same ligand is present okay let me write here this is the same metal ion this is the same metal ion here as well as here as well as the ligand i mean this which i am representing by this red circle here this is also same in both the cases right now you can see here that the only difference is in between the magnitude of the positive charge 
I mean, in case one, this metal ion here is having a high magnitude of positive charge, right? On the other hand, in this case, this same metal ion is having a very less magnitude of the positive charge. And now we can say here that because of this high magnitude of positive charge, obviously with this ligand here having this negative charge, the interactions what whatever will be there in between this metal ion and ligand, they will also be greater in magnitude, right? So it will be, of course, forming more stronger bonds resulting in the formation of a more stable type of metal complex. On the other hand, in this second case in which the charge on that same metal ion is quite small, so it will be leading to lesser forces of attraction in between the metal ion as well as the ligand resulting in a weaker type of bonds here as well as less stable type of complex here, right? So the simple thing here is what that higher the charge on the central metal ion, greater will be the forces of attraction, stronger will be the bonds and thus more stable will be the corresponding metal complex, right? And we do have experimental data which will be proving this thing. As you can see here, uh, we have two complexes of iron. This is the hexacyano iron complex in which F is present in plus three oxidation state. And we do have a second complex here in which the same iron atom is present in plus two oxidation state. Okay. And now experimentally talking, if we will go for the calculations of the beta values, I mean the overall stability constants and we take the logarithm, the value in this case is quite high as you can see here it is 31 on the other hand in this case it is just 8.3 representing that this complex here is very very stable in which the iron is present in plus 3 it is present in plus 3 I mean the higher oxidation state right as compared to this complex here in which which is less stable in which the iron is present in plus 2 of oxidation state right so it is a uh, direct evidence which is proving that higher the charge on the central metal ion, greater will be the stability of the corresponding metal complex, right? And now let us talk about the second important factor, which is what it is the size of the central metal ion, which will also be deciding the stability of the metal complex, right? And we have seen from the concept of the charge density that smaller the size of the metal ion, the ligands can approach more close to the metal ion and the bonds will be stronger, of course, leading to the formation of a more stable complex after that, okay? So you can see here, I, ha I have tried to represent a metal ion which is having a small size, which is having a small size here represented by this blue color and then a ligand of course here which is which I am representing by a red color and let us say in this case where the metal ion is of small size the ligand is present closer to the metal ion right and you can see here this is the first case actually and this is the second case in which the same size ligand is present but now the difference is what that the metal ion is what it is having a large size right so what you can see is if you compare this diagram diagram as well as this diagram you will see that in this case the ligand is present away from the central metal ion as compared to the first case in which the ligand is present more close to the central metal ion right so what is happening that if the size is small like in this case the ligand will be present more close to the metal ion resulting in the formation of stronger bonds and stable will be the complex right and if the size of the metal ion is quite large the same ligand having same size which was there in this case it will be present away from the metal ion the bonds will be relatively weaker the bonds will be relatively less strong and even the complex will relatively be less stable right now one thing which may be coming into your mind at this point is what that why we are not why we are not sending this ligand more close to this metal ion what if this is having a large size okay so what is that thing which is limiting that it will stay only at this particular distance here from the metal ion right i'm repeating so 
this thing must be coming into your mind that what if this metal line is having a large size why we are not sending the ligand here more close to the metal line the answer here is what that there is present a term known as the van der Waal radii and every atom has its own van der Waal radius right so there is present a certain minimum distance only up to which the two atoms can can, can come close to each other right so let me show you the second diagram here in which i have tried to represent the van der Waal radii i means the van der the van der Waal radius of these atoms i mean the metal ion as well as that of the ligand so you can see here that if the metal ion is having a small size the van der Waal radius of that metal ion will also be small right so whatever this dotted circle you can see here around the central metal ion is what it is the van der Waal radius of this metal ion and this is what this is the van der Waal radii of the ligand of the ligand here let me write here this is the vendor this is the vendor wall radius of the ligand and this is what this is the vendor wall radius of the metal line right so because this point here at which the vendor wall radius of the metal line and the ligand they are meeting each other the atoms here both the atoms i mean the metal ion as well as the ligand now they cannot go more close to each other right so this is the threshold point this is the limiting point only up to which the two atoms can come close to each other right so what will happen is that when the metal ion is present which is having a large size and having a large van der Waal radius as you can see here in this case obviously now they cannot come close to each other beyond this point otherwise what will happen is that the van der Waal radii of this metal ion will be overlapping with the van der Waal radius of this ligand molecule here which will be causing great repulsions and thus the energy of the system will go very high okay so this thing will never happen so they will be coming close to each other only when the van der Waal radii of the metal ion and that of the ligand they are just touching each other so this will be the minimum distance this will be the minimum distance up to which the metal ion and the ligand can come close to each other right so obviously we can see here now that still because it is being restricted by the van der Waal radius type of thing so this is the distance in between this ligand here and this large sized metal ion right and definitely this distance here is this distance here is higher this is larger as compared to this distance here in between the same ligand and some metal ion which is of smaller size right so what is happening actually the smaller size of the metal ion i mean in this case it is allowing what it is allowing more close more close approach of the ligands i mean this thing so what will happening what will happen here is that it will be resulting in the formation of these bonds here i mean this bond here and because this bond will be a shorter bond so obviously it will be a stronger bond in nature right so whatever complex we will get from this type of interaction that will be a more stable complex it will be more stable as compared to in this case in which the metal ion here is having a large size right so this is how the smaller size of the metal ion also affects the stability of the metal complex right so you can see here i have tried to represent the stability order in case of the divalent ions divalent means what this, these are having the plus two charge right so starting from the barium strontium calcium magnesium manganese iron cobalt nickel zinc and copper you can see here that the charge is same that is plus two of charge it is present on each metal ion so we can say here that the size is actually decreasing as we are moving from here as we are moving from here to here i mean towards the right hand side right so because the charge is same here the charge let us say the charge is same here this is the plus two charge i mean this is the plus two charge and here is that same plus two charge and this is let us say this is the end of the series here starting from this side 
So this is the same plus two charge, but what is happening is that the size of the metal ion is decreasing. Let us say this was the size of the barium, this was the size of the barium here, and as we are going from here to here and then from here to here along this series, up to copper here, what is happening? The size is very small. The size is very small. So you can see here, the charge density is actually increasing as we are moving from left to right, okay? Because that same plus two charge which was present on this much of size of the barium, I mean this barium metal ion, that same plus two charge is now present on this copper atom which is having a smaller size, right? So obviously in this case, it is having what it is having a high charge density and we can say that as we are moving from left to right in this series here, what is happening, the charge density is increasing and thus the stability of the metal complexes will also be increasing, right? And we do have a name for this series here. This is known as the irving william series, right? And I want to show you here that you can see here the barium is present here in the periodic table. Then from that irving william series, we have strontium that is having a smaller size followed by calcium and then comes the magnesium. So what is happening is as we are moving from here, I mean from here to here, the size is decreasing. So what will happen is the stability of the complex will be increasing, right? And the second thing which I want to show from this periodic table which is based upon size is what that after this magnesium comes the manganese in that irving william series followed by iron, cobalt, nickel, copper and zinc here, right? And now you will see, you will say here that the size starting from this magnesium up to zinc, it is almost same here. You can see here that the size is not varying to a very large amount. It is almost similar here, okay? I want to show you here some more experimental things that is if we talk about the manganese from that periodic table the size is what it is 91 picometers right and for iron it is 83 and then moving on to cobalt 82 nickel 78 zinc 74 and finally the copper 69 here right so although from this periodic table picture we can see here that there is not much difference in the size of these transition elements starting from manganese to zinc, but it is very clear from this data here that yes, the size is decreasing as we are moving from here to here. So let me write here that yes, the size is decreasing as we are moving from manganese to copper, although it is not visible from this periodic table picture, right? But as far as the barium, strontium, calcium and magnesium are concerned, it is very much clear from this picture that you can see here that barium is having a large size, then comes the strontium, calcium and magnesium is having a smaller size, right? So in this irving william series, the size of course is decreasing as we are moving from here to here leading to the more stability of the complexes, right? And one thing which is now left in this irving william series is what that this part of the series is relatively less stable. I mean, whatever complexes we will get from barium, strontium, calcium and magnesium, they will be relatively less stable as compared to those complexes which we will get from these metal ions, okay, means from this part of the, this part of the series is more stable and they will be forming more stable complex, right? Now we can say here that because these are the transition metals, so extra type of stabilization will be present here in this part of the series from here to here. And why this is happening? Because of the crystal field theory and the crystal field stabilization types of energies which will be there in these transition metals and it will be absent in this part of the series, right? So this is all about the size affecting the stability of the metal complexes. And now the last point is what it is as you can see here, it is the electronegativity of the central metal ion, which will also be affecting the stability of the corresponding metal complex. Okay, we can start by saying that the metal ions can be classified into two different categories. The first one is the class A metal ion 
and the second is what it is the class b metal ions okay so there are present certain properties of the class a metal ion as well as the class b metal ions let us have a look on these properties the class a metal ions on one side they are fairly electro positive in nature and these includes the alkali metals alkaline earth metals non transition metals as well as the transition metals which are having only a few d electrons right so all such metals belongs to what they belongs to the class a of the category of the metal lines right in the same way we have another category that is known as the class b category which contain metal lines which are less electro positive in nature and these generally includes heavier metals which are having larger size and they are easily polarizable right so what will happen is that we can also say that whatever class a metal ions are present in the periodic table they also have another important property that they have relatively less electrons beyond the inert gas core right so we can always write the electronic configuration of any element let us say you can see here the scandium potassium gold as well as palladium in terms of the inert gas core right so you can see here that the potassium is having atomic number of 19 we can always write down the configuration in this way i mean 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 like this here i mean the whole electronic configuration as well as there is also present a second way of representing the electronic configuration of the elements which is what which is by taking the help of the inert gas core right so in this case the inert gas core is what it is the argon which is having the 18 electrons so instead or in addition to this 18th electron there is also present one more electron which is present in the 4s orbitals here right so this is just a way to represent the electronic configuration this is the first way or the conventional way and this is the second way right so you can read from here that the class a metal ions they have a unique property apart from these properties which is what that they have relatively less electrons beyond the inert gas core right so you can see here in case of scandium apart from this inert gas core only three electrons are present which we can say that they are very less in number as well as in potassium also only one electron is present here apart from this inert gas core right but as far as the class b metal ions are concerned they have relatively large number of electrons beyond the inert gas core right for example we have this gold here as well as palladium you can see here that apart from this apart from this inert gas core they are having large number of electron which you can count from here it is having 14 plus 10 plus 1 here right as well as the palladium is also having relatively more number of electrons apart from this inert gas core and how many these electrons are present these are 10 in number right so these are some of the important properties for the class a as well as the class b metal ions right now let us see that how the class of this metal ion may be a or maybe b how it will be affecting the overall stability of any metal complex right so you can even see see here that these are what these are the alkali metals here and these are what these are the alkaline these are the alkaline earth metals what i am showing you here is that these are the class a type of metal ions which are fairly electro positive in nature right so here is the alkali and here is the alkali here is the alkaline earth metals and moreover i have told you that a few transition element will also be there which are having lower number of electrons in their d shell okay let us say the scandium is there as well as the titanium is there second scandium is what it is having atomic number 21 and this is having 22 so in this case it will be having 3d and 4s it will be having 2 and 2 here so 2 and 1 here i'm sorry and in this case it will be 3d and 4s it will be having two electrons here as well as two electrons here right so even those transition elements which are having a few d electron they also belongs to what they also belongs to the class a 
category of the metal ions right and here you can see that in this yellow color what is this this is the class this is the class b of the metal ion which normally contain the heavier elements such as iridium platinum palladium silver gold cadmium mercury and tellurium right so we do have some elements which are present on the borderline which are being represented by this green color okay so let's not talk about the borderline type of metal ions in this video so this is just a representation in the periodic table that where are present the class a type of metal ions and what is the position of class b type of metal ions okay and now let us see that how the class a and the class b metal ions will be affecting the stability of any metal complex okay so coming back on to that slide in which we have the class a as well as the class b metal ions so now please listen carefully that the class a metal ion form more stable complexes with those ligands which are having smaller atoms and are highly electronegative in nature and they are not easily polarizable right let me repeat here that whatever class a metal ions are there they will be forming more stronger as well as stable complexes with those ligands which will be having high electronegativity they are not easily polarizable and they are having smaller sized atoms such as the fluoride ion oxygen as well as the nitrogen containing ligands right on the other hand the class b type of the metal ion will be forming stable complexes with those ligands which are having larger size and they are less electronegative in nature and they are easily polarizable right such as phosphorus sulfur arsenic bromine as well as iodine okay so it all depends upon what type of metal ion is present and what type of ligand is present and thus we can say that the stability of the complex in between the metal ion and the ligand will depend upon what class of the metal ion is present there and what type of ligand is present there right so if we are having class a type of metal ion and we are having these type of ligand obviously the result will be what it will result in the formation of a stronger type of bond and stable type of complexes here right and if we are having some class b type of metal ion and these type of ligands the result will be what it will be resulting in the formation of stronger type of bonds in between and the overall complex formed will be highly stable right so this is the experimental proof here you can see here we have three or uh, four different complexes first is the uh, fluoride of silver then the chloride bromide and finally we have the iodide of the silver metal ion right and here you can see that these are the log beta values beta is what it is the overall stability constant so you can see here that as we are moving from here to here the value of the log beta is increasing from 0.3 to 3.2 followed by 4.5 and finally for this silver iodide we are having a beta value of 8.0 which is relatively higher from all these three cases and thus we can say here that the silver iodide will be more stable complex here right and now how we can explain this thing on the electronegativity part of the central metal ion we can say here that because iodide actually belongs to this category of the ligands which can form more stable complexes you can see here which can form more stable complexes with the class b of the metal ion we will see here that the silver is what here it is nothing it is actually a class b type of metal ion right so we have a class b metal ion i mean silver and which can form more stable type of complexes with those ligands which are larger in size iodine is larger which are having less electronegativity iodine is having less electronegativity as well as which are easily polarizable so let me add here that because iodine is easily polarizable so the bond formation in between the class b metal ion that is silver in this case and the iodide type of ligand it will be a very strong type of interaction the bonding will be very strong type of bonding and finally whatever complex we will get here that will also be a very very stable type of complex right so this is all about this lecture here in which we have seen that the stability of a metal complex depend upon mainly the two factors 
the first one is the central metal ion and the second one is what it is the nature of the ligand surrounding that metal ion and as far as the metal ion part is concerned it further depend upon three different types of factors the first one is the charge on the metal ion higher the charge higher will be the stability the size of the metal ion smaller the size higher will be the stability and the finally the last thing is what it is the electronegativity we have seen that we may have two different classes of the metal ion the class a and the class b and we do have now information that what type of ligand will form stronger and stable complexes with class a type of metal ions and what other ligands are there which can form more strong and stable complexes with class b type of metal ions right so this is all about this lecture here thank you so much